People's Democratic Party, PDP, has stated that the expose by the former governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, Sanusi Lamido Sanusi, which says that the gains made by, the, by Nigeria in 35 years were wiped out in the last five years, is an indictment on the APC-led government of President Muhammad Buhari. Now, the PDP noted that the declaration reflects the position of the majority of Nigerians across the country. Sanusi had earlier released a statement which said the Buhari presidency and the APC have in the last six years only succeeded in destroying every sector of our national life. Their manifest incompetence, unbridled corruption, treasury looting, impunity, exclusionist and restrictive economic policies that have brought our nation to her knees. Well, joining us to discuss this further is the Deputy Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party, Dura Udeyemi. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. I'm happy uh, to be with you this evening. Interesting. Um, but the PDP, uh, which is the opposition uh, party to the, you know, the leading party APC in the state, um, has has jumped on this um, expose that you call, as you call it, um, by the former CBN governor. Many would say that the CBN former CBN governor is just playing to the gallery, as maybe because he's no longer uh, in you know, in the good books of the APC and Mr. President, and that's why he's waxing uh, lyrical. And why is the PDP jumping on this? This should be your job as the opposition to bring out these sorts of exposés if they be true. Um, is there anything that uh, Sanusi has said that PDP has not said in the past? No. The problem is, the people believe in the messenger than the message. Simply because perhaps it is coming from Sule uh, from La Sanusi now. People are taking it serious and they're looking at it as somebody who is an expert and who knows exactly what we are saying. And uh, as a matter of fact, PDP, as an opposition party, has said more than this, not only now, we have been saying it from time immemorial. And uh, now that Sanusi has said it, we applaud it, we endorse it, and we are calling on other Nigerians not to shy away from uh, what is happening, the current situation we find ourselves in the hands of APC. They should speak out. We have the likes of uh, Reverend Hassan, uh, Hassan Kuka, who has not shy away from saying his mind. Baba Baba Sojo has not kept quiet. And we are calling on other eminent Nigerians to condemn this administration. Not only condemn, but to appraise them and give them the mark they deserve, which Sanusi exactly did in his comments. But the presidency has come up to say many times, many times, there are several publications from the government saying, in fact, the president himself has given a pat on his own back, saying that, they, that the country is way better now than it was under your administration. And you had more than eight years to run the country and that you ran you ran the country into the ground and 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 a point as some of the pundits who are on the side of mr president would say is that in 2015 nigerians were so sick of the pdp and that's why they voted mr president in what do you have to say to that have you seen any student that will score himself low no student will ever fail himself so whatever is coming out from the government is expected. They are bound to, decide, to defend their inefficiency. It's normal. Some people are even employed to do the job. So we are not surprised. They are doing the job they are paid to do. But you and I live in Nigeria. We know what goes on. Is it in terms of security or the economy or even the development, the infrastructure that we can score this administration high when people keep talking about 16 years of uh, PDP, it's quite unfortunate that we are not appraising what is happening to the, you know, to, to Nigeria at present. PD, of course, let's assume Nigerians voted against PDP. APC is now there. Why do you keep referring to the era of PDP that, that is no longer in the, at the end of affair for the past six years? What we are saying is the era of PDP has been beneficiary, has been beneficial to Nigerians. And Nigerians have benefited a lot 
from that administration than what is happening here. And that is exactly what Nigerians are saying, that if you cannot take us forward, if the change is no longer forthcoming, leave us where you, meet, you, where you met us. And where did they meet us? They, they met them where PDP carried the administration, you know, of a buoyancy. It wasn't as bad as this when PDP was there. Oh, but you accept that Only... it was bad. So, so you're saying it wasn't as bad as this, but then you accept that it was bad. No, no, no. Don't, don't misquote me. Don't well, misquote me. Said. I was what I'm saying is, it. Nigeria was extremely good. It wasn't as bad as this. Meaning that it was bad, but, but not as bad as this. Well, anyway, maybe that is the interpretation you want to give what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is, it is bad now that Nigerians are now saying that this administration is the worst they have ever seen in this country. Is, is this just enough to criticize the government? And I'm not in any way saying that we do not have a right. Every Nigerian has a right to criticize any government. But my question is, uh, is it just enough for the PDP to criticize the government? But then if we take a look at the PDP and the APC side by side right now, uh, we can't really tell the difference because both parties seem to not really have anything to show Nigerians or any shred of hope that Nigerians can hold on to come 2023. I mean, both parties seem to be having problems. You're going back and forth. And really, the same people that you're pointing fingers uh, at are the same people who in the next few months are going to crisscross into your party. So what is the difference between PDP and APC? And why should we hope that any good thing would come out of either you or the party in power. We are not in government right now. We have been but out you of do hope to take back years. power in 2023, don't you? I, 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 yeah, I'm laying the premises for my argument. Okay. What I'm saying in essence is, the six years that we have been out of government has afforded us that opportunity to look at issues thoroughly and to plan and strategize against the misrule of the present APC with the assurance that if we are given that opportunity in 2023, we are going to do things differently. We have learned our lesson and uh, we have uh, sat down to re strategize. And that was the reason why at the point in time, the chairman offered an explanation to Nigeria that if there is any way we have offended them or we have done things that are wrong, they should forgive us. But if there is always an opportunity for us to redeem whatever it is they think we have not done right. And regarding the people that are more, that are crossing over to uh, APC, we can be rest assured that it is part of the cleansing exercise. People can no longer wait in PDP because the way PDP is, is being run now is that it belongs to nobody. It is the party of the people. It is the party, it is, it is the party that gives power to the, to the electorate. And that is why we are giving that power to the youth to the women, and to virtually all Nigerians, that this is an opportunity for them to build a party that we correct the anomalies of APC. You, well, you, you didn't really answer my question, because I did not ask about those who left your party to the APC. I'm saying, no, in, a few in a few months, you will have yes. people leave the APC into your party. So what cleansing are you talking about here? Because those same people will cross over to your party and be very eligible to run for offices. They will still be the same people who will work with you in your so-called strategy to redeem Nigeria from the clause of the APC. And so I ask again, what is the difference if the same people who are in that APC and that you're complaining about today that are mismanaging the country now cross over to your party? Like you always point fingers at the APC and say, oh, if you cross over to the APC, you become... Um, you know, um, holy or something. But it's the same thing that, the same rule that applies to you in the PDP. So what's the difference? Why should we have hope whatsoever that you, you are capable of changing anything come 2023? Shouldn't we be looking for other options? Unfortunately, you are not going to bring people from Ghana or from my people to come and run Nigeria for us. It is we, the Nigerians, that we, that we run it ourselves. But those Nigerians and don't have to be in your party, do they? I, I, I'm coming, I'm coming. If, you, if uh, people who are politicians from APC or from PDP are the kind of Nigerians that we have, that we run this country, and if politics is the game of number, we hardly can do nothing about this kind of a situation other than to encourage the political party.
to stick to a policy and manifesto that if you are joining us, if you are giving us our mandate, these are the program that should be executed. That's the only way to go about it. There's nothing you can do about people crossing carpets on a daily basis. It's, it's very hard. How about, and, uh, how about coming up? Unfortunately, there about, cannot be a third hold party. On, hold on, Mr. Duran. How about coming yeah. up with a clear-cut ideology for your party so that whoever is coming to your party sticks to that ideology and knows that if you are in the PDP, this is our ideology? Just like every I other just country mentioned. has an ideology, except for Nigeria. And that's why we keep having this cross capital So if the PDP is hoping to make a difference, how about the talk of an ideology, a clear-cut one? I just mentioned it. And perhaps you are using my language to ask, my, to ask a question. I just said that the PDP is a reformed political party that has now drawn a program, a policy, and an ideology that will be given to whoever is joining us, either from APC or for our fresh, that if you are joining us, this is the policy of the party. So that whoever is representing the party will not make that mistake again. And PDP will, can become a formidable political party. And I've just mentioned it now, and I'm imagining that while it has been difficult for a third force, a political party, to, to come up or display APC and the PDP, is the fact that in Nigeria, Nigerians don't vote for a, an unknown party. We have other political parties in existence. It's not only PDP or APC, but ask anybody who is condemning people in PDP or APC to form a political party or to come together. They, they can't succeed with it. Why this is so, that is the kind of the, the nature of Nigerian politics and Nigerian politicians that we have. So and, nobody and, can be, and, can, and so, you know, can so be we'll, for that. we'll continue in that vicious cycle and not try to change it. Now, again, I'm going to ask that question the third time. Maybe this time I'll be a bit more clearer. I'll use, for example, the US and the UK. They have the yeah. Tories who are the conservatives. They have the Labour Party. And they, they have yeah. the um, UKIP. They have the Lib Dems. They have... And these people have clear-cut policies. Now, if you belong to the Lib Dem, you're obviously uh, against, you know, migration. If you are a, a, um, a Tory, then you are conservative, yeah. and you believe you are obviously like a Republican in the U.S. who, who yeah. are um, anti, uh, who are pro-life, who are against abortion, and all yeah. the things that the liberals stand for. But when you tell me that the PDP is going to have a clear-cut ideology and then they will tell you to do some things, I'm sorry, that's not clear-cut enough for me. I, I don't understand why I would vote for you because you told the person to do something. Um, I will rather ask you to wait because very soon we will be, we'll be having our presidential candidates. As soon as we are able to present somebody to Nigerians, we will come, we are, we will come out with a clear cut ideology and policy which will be presented to Nigerians and which will give us assurance that in 2023 we are going to win the presidential election. So what I'm saying in essence is we have used the last six years to study the situation of Nigeria and in Nigeria and to come up with policies and strategy in such a way that whoever is going to govern Nigeria from PDP we follow that to the letter so that he, is, he or she is not going to be a misrepresentative of what PDP stands for. So why not wait until that time? Okay. Well, Duran Odeyemi is the Deputy uh, Publicity Secretary for the People's Democratic Party. Thank you very much for speaking with us. We appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me. Great. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We have come to the end of the program today. But before we go, we'll take a look at the roundup of discussions we had this week. Uh, the last election was not really an election. It was a big scam. It's a big electoral scam. You know, it was not a real election. What I'm does sorry. that mean? People came out and voted, even though there was some a drop well, in the numbers, the people came yeah. out and casted their votes. So yeah, when you say it was a big scam, know, what does that mean? There were goats and sheep and dogs that were involved in the elections. You know, people brought out How so? all sorts of things. Yeah, 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 I'm talking metaphorically now. So it was just a big scam. Uh, and uh, too many issues, too many issues. I don't want to open a can of worms, but it was, not, it was totally illegitimate. We saw the president then 
Having uh, moving in private jets of uh, people like the governor of the River State and uh, uh, the leader of the Sashwadi Chinubu and the rest. And then you know, a lot of money watches was brought into. Elections are expensive everywhere in the world. But this is the funding that is the problem. So the crowdfunding you are talking about will not work because if if there is a, a candidate, an independent candidate that people trust and doesn't belong to any political party, people can just transform for this guy and make him raise money for him for him to contest the election. One of the greatest problems of this administration is, is uh, nepotism. Before the Senate and the House of Reps, the National Assembly passed that bill, we are aware that some northern elites uh, had meetings with, with, with the carcass of the, of the National Assembly from the north. And the message was that protect the interests of the north. It's, 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 it's rather ridiculous that we should be talking about protecting the interests of a section. And, and that played out in the throwing up of the 30% of profit of NNBC Limited for oil exploration in the frontiers. And the Niger Delta people, who produce about 80% of the resources of this country, for so many years, have been badly treated. And what Mr. President has done, as we have said earlier, is a clear message to us, the Niger Delta people, that how we feel and what we say do not matter in the scheme of affairs of Nigeria. And, and so it's a message we have received. And not too far from today, the Niger Delta people will also send a message to Nigerians. In Kogi State, we've been living with all these Fulani people over the years. They've always been with us. But they've been so with it, us it, in it, every it, other state yeah, across the it, country. It, it means that if some people are now uh, criminals among them, it's easy when you work with the leadership of the Fulanese in your state, you'll be able to, uh, you'll be able to sieve out those that are criminals among them. Let me, let me, let me give you... I'm sorry, I'm going to no, no, push you. you. No, no, let no, me tell I, you this. Let, I'm let, sorry. No, let me tell you this. Let's use, for example, yeah. Kanu State. Okay. Uh, Kaduna State, I beg your pardon. It okay. seems to be a kidnap haven right now. And so they keep doing it time after time. Let's also look at Governor Zulum. You're telling me that the Governor Zulum is not working with the Fulani chiefs in his state. You're telling me that a, an El Rufai is not doing the same. You're telling me that all of these states that are experiencing this, the, the banditry over and over again, that they do not know that they should be liaising would, with these guys. I would not, I would or are not. you saying that the Fulani men in those states are uncooperative? Which is it? Okay, I will not be able to speak for those states. I can only speak for Kogi State. What we are doing in Kogi State is to work with the leadership of the Fulanis in the state. I don't understand what uh, uh, the reference point uh, to younger generation would be. Uh, we're still, uh, we're yet to recover from what happened in 1993 as a nation. We're yet to remedy completely the, the ills of uh, that annulment. We're yet to walk away from uh, the problems that uh, uh, otherwise that process, that June 12th election would have solved. No matter how much politicians and politicians attempt to rewrite history, history will stand tall. And that's why some of us are very concerned about, uh, about the pre-singing of IBB, the pre-singing of Maradona. The priest singing of the, the man, the, the media called the evil genius. I, I, I think that what we must note here is, and I say without fear of querulous critics and without a convocation, that the time to call a spade by his name is now. Uh, maybe he wants a good closure to his uh, sojourn in this space. But that's that, that <laughs> you know, uh, different. I, I, I disagree with politicians singing his praise. Uh, the last election was. Well, thank you all for being part of the show. I hope you enjoyed all our packages for this week. I am Mary Annika, and I'll see you next week when we return on Plus Politics. Have a great weekend.